Hi, everybody, and Happy New Year. Um, so, y'all just forgive me. I'm homesick today, but I was not going to miss this opportunity to tell y'all I miss y'all over the holidays. And I'm so glad that we are back on our regular schedule again. And even better than that, I'm so excited about today's speaker, Jeff Henderson. So, Jeff and I have known each other a really long time. And it was very interesting. We were introduced through our mutual friend, Dr. Mark Santa, and he was telling me about Jeff and how he made it so much easier to hire people and digging through the nitty gritty. And so you wouldn't go through any more bad hires. And at the time I had just gone through hiring H E double hockey sticks, trying to find somebody to work with me. And I was really frustrated. And I was like, well, I mean, like how great could this guy be? And, Mark is like, listen, he can dial down and tell you all the things you never really even wanted to know about somebody, but should before you let them work in your office. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I'll check it out. So Jeff and I connected. We talk about it. And he's like, well, here, since you're hiring, I'm going to send you this link. So get to one of your candidates, have them fill this out. Tell me and we'll go over and I'll tell you all about it before you make a hiring decision. I'm like, okay. I filled it out myself, all about myself. And the whole time I'm doing this thing, I'm thinking, I don't know how this tells <laughs> anybody anything about me. It's not going to be right. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. And I send it to him and Jeff schedules our consult. We start talking about it. And I will tell you, when I first got the report on me, it was so accurate. I was in complete denial. Like, this is not me. I am not like this. Not at all. So I take it to Doc. Dr. Foxworth, and I give it to him, and he was like, oh my gosh, it's like the manual of you. <laughs> so Jeff and I go through this whole process where we talk about it and whether or not they would be a good candidate, and just so you know, I read my own report, and I was like, I wouldn't hire this person. <laughs> and it's no. exactly right to me, where on the surface, you would think you probably wouldn't want to hire this person, but let me tell you why you would. <laughs> I have loved him ever since. <laughs> I also <laughs> Confess that we just did my own personality profile and work profile. But the truth is, every new person that works in our executive team gets a copy of this report that is a little dated, and they are blown away by how accurate it reflects how I work, my personality, um, how to communicate with me. Because that could sometimes be a challenge. I know y'all find that hard to believe, but um, it's an incredibly useful tool. And through that time, you know, Jeff and I have talked all about um, the difficulties in hiring today and teamwork. And because the bigger we get, the more you have to work at getting people to get along. Add just one new person and all hell breaks loose. Anyway, I don't know anybody. All of this is to say that I don't know anybody who mm -hmm. knows as much about the psychology behind hiring the right people for your office than Jeff or how to pick the right people to work in your office because let's be honest it's a big old pain in the butt none of us want to do it and it's super expensive every time we have to replace somebody so now I'm going to stop talking and telling you how much I love him and how amazing and smart he is and let Jeff tell you all about him and share his insights on hiring the right people for your practice. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you, Christy. What a great introduction and a great, great background story. That was a lot of fun <laughs> to be able to, you know, walk through the process with you uh, personally and discover halfway through the call that, that those results were yours. You shouldn't have done that to me, but uh, that was fun. Well, um, first of all, uh, welcome everybody to the webinar. It's great that uh, to be with you, first of all. It's a privilege for me to be able to share some of the things that I've learned over the last uh, many years. Um, and I know that your time is very valuable, so I'm going to move very, very quickly. And uh, so welcome to the perfect job interview. I'm going to explain that in a minute, the, the title, uh, the three biggest secrets to knowing who your best candidates are and how they'll actually perform. And you can do that. Um, and, uh, and the idea, obviously, is that you want to avoid mistakes. So anyway, I hope that um, you'll enjoy some of the information I'm going to share with you. Uh, I, I could speak about this for two days, but uh, I'm going to jam pack as much in here as I can. Some of you are here because uh, you're either going to be hiring soon or you're currently in a hiring uh, mode. Um, 
or you have maybe struggled in the past with hiring decisions and been a little maybe fooled or just not gotten the right person or had difficulty getting the right people to apply even. Um, not sure why you're here, but uh, some of those reasons may be uh, valid. And so what we're going to do, if I get used to the system here and remember to click the right button, I'm going to share with you three critical secrets or you might call them strategies. One of those is a tool um, and a few other tips that really can truly revolutionize your hiring and basically give you a lot more control over the process. And mo most people feel they're out of control. Um, over time, what I'm going to share with you, even though I've kind of boiled it down to the three most critical things for you to do and to implement, if you will, um, these things literally can change or transform your team over time. The performance you get from them, because you're going to have better people in the office and know exactly how to help them and your culture, which is a big deal, right? And so this challenging part of your business is going to be a lot easier for you. It doesn't have to be so difficult and we don't have to be guessing, which is what most of us are doing. Um, so just a quick uh, introduction. Christy gave me a great introduction, but this is my family. We live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I've run a small, uh, actually a fairly large family business for the last 20 years. Uh, I know what it's like to deal with employees, to hire and to fire and to help manage people and, and try to create uh, drive performance in them. Um, so I've been in your shoes. I've done a lot of training and development as part of that, uh, my role in the, comp the family business. Um, I launched Insight Hiring and Development in 2013, primarily working with chiropractic offices all across the country. Why chiropractic? I've always loved the field. I almost became a chiropractor, uh, decided, I uh, just felt impressed to turn in a different direction, but I've always had a great interest in chiropractic. Um, and so I work with small business owners in general, you know, not just chiropractic, but mainly chiropractic. And what I do for them is I, I help them make really good hiring decisions. I'm not a recruiter. I don't go find people, um, but I'm there at the most critical point in the process, which is when, when you're about to make a decision and you need to reduce your risk and know exactly what you have. So that's kind of what I do. But I also implement some of these strategies for current staff and team development stuff. So a lot of fun. Um, I have profiled literally hundreds of job candidates over the last several years and uh, and employees as well. So let's uh, jump in a little bit. Your business is made up of three primary elements, and that is people uh, doing tasks inside of systems. So if you break it down, that's pretty much what a business is. And by far, of course, the most important element of those three uh, that I listed is the people. Right. It drives absolutely everything in your practice, your business. Um, and it, it is the glue that kind of holds it all together. We all know that. So not having the right people on your team. And I'm sure if you're if, if, if you've come to the webinar, you, you probably already experienced at least a little bit of this. Not having the right person on your team, how it can affect you. It's a major drain on your time. It's a major drain on profits. People don't actually realize how how expensive it is to have the wrong, wrong employee or to have turnover in their business. It's much higher, according to research, in terms of costs than most people actually realize. But it keeps you from getting what you want. And so who you hire and how your team actually performs really controls your life. If you're a manager or an owner of the business, you know this. It, it literally controls everything. And so that's how critical it is. Um, the things that I'm going to share, these three primary secrets or strategies are going to give you, like I said, way more control over this process um, of hiring. And you're going to have better employees. And, and most importantly, numero uno is you're going to reduce the risk that you have when you're making hiring decisions because it is a risky decision. Right. All right. So um, I, I've kind of cobble together a bunch of resources that I'm going to give you. If you stick around, let me teach you some things and share some good education on stuff. Um, if you stick around toward the end of the webinar, I'm going to give you some resources that so that you can implement some of these things. OK, and they're free. Um, one of them is a set of guides and templates, even sample ads and how to do some of the things I'm going to share. The second thing I'm actually excited about. My brother wrote a book. Uh, it's a short read, but it's awesome. 
and it's a very condensed way. It's, it's a guide, basically, an ultimate small business guide to hiring superstars. And it's, it's going to be, it's sort of a, um, a longer view and, and a lot more information than what I'm giving you today. Okay. But I'm going to give you the condensed version. It's going to be free to you. I'm going to actually pay for it myself, send it to you if you want it. The only thing that we're going to do is charge you for shipping, which I think the way that I went, the research I did, it's going to cost like $3.50. So I'm going to I'm going to give that to you if you want it and you pay shipping. I'm happy to send that to you. And then I've got a couple special offers. So I'll uh, I'll cover that at the end of the, of the webinar. So let's get after it. If you if you can, let's take notes and and uh, I'm going to go really fast. The first thing I wanted to just cover very quickly, briefly, because you kind of most of you know, this are the seven biggest hiring mistakes that we um, that we make when we're hiring usually. And I always cover these when I do a webinar for Christy. So I'm going to cover them for you. Number one is we hire too quickly, right? We, uh, we might, uh, we're in a bind because somebody has, has left and, you know, we end up having to make a rash decision, emotional decision. And, and, uh, we may not put people through the ringer and really take them through a process and we hire too quickly. And, and sometimes we get lucky, but a lot of times that can, that can lead to problems. Hiring on gut feelings. A lot of people say, you know, this is what I do. I hire on gut feelings and, um, or, 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 or I had a gut feeling, you know, you put them through the process, but then you have a feeling and you sort of use that as your guide for who out of the top three you choose, right? Well, I call that guessing. Okay. And if your gut feeling is to, is to not hire someone, follow that gut feeling. If your gut feeling is to hire somebody, I say slow way down and continue to take them through the process, look under the hood, do all those things that I'm gonna teach you how to do, okay? Number three, trust a friend's recommendation. I don't know how many of you have been, uh, possibly made a bad hiring decision uh, because somebody recommended somebody or maybe you knew somebody from the office. A lot of the clients that I have in the industry, they they will have a patient that they've known for 10 years, right? And they think that's just such a nice person and they're pretty sharp and they hire them. And sometimes it works out, but what I would say is be careful and make sure you take them through your process. Okay. Even if they're recommended from a great friend or you've known them for 10 years as a patient. Okay. Uh, references. Now this is pretty interesting. You always want to check references, obviously, but my caution to you is that you can even buy references. So take them with a grain of salt. Don't make your hiring decision based solely on really good references. I get people all the time saying, well, they had great references. And so they feel like they should move forward. And I, I tell them you got to slow down. Let me show you this. This is pretty cool. It's pretty crazy, actually. Fake references for sale. Here are, let's see, six different websites that you can go to. And if you go here, you will be blown away that people can actually, th th these, these companies offer Fake, fake references. Not only that, for a hundred dollars or more, you can have a virtual uh, live assistant answer a call as though they are your assistant and actually give you good references or answer questions. Uh, no joke. Um, websites they can create for you. My point is, you know, it's getting trickier and trickier to, to hire the right person and know what you really have because they're so prepared. Ace the interview. Uh, speaking of being prepared. So, you know, this is a very tough part here because in the interview, we're trying our best to uncover the truth. Right. And really get to know the person. But it's kind of a chess game. And we'll talk about this later. But people are totally prepared. If you go to Google and you Google, um, how do I ace an interview? You will have over nine point three million uh, links or responses for that where you can go online and learn how, you know, what questions are going to be asked, how to conduct a, a, a how to perform in an interview. And uh, th that's what, that's what we're up against today when we're interviewing people. Um, impressive resume. A lot of people put so much weight in that. And the challenge with that is that um, the, the science, the society for human resource managers uh, has done a lot of research on this and over 50% of resumes have a bunch of false information on them. So be really careful there as well. Obviously, we want to review resumes, but it's number seven is delegating this critical responsibility. Never, ever delegate this responsibility to somebody because it's so critical. Um, I'm going to give you two more real quickly that I don't have them on a slide. 
Number eight would be never hype or sell your candidate into your company. We make that mistake a lot of times and we um, we're selling people into the role and into the job and the company and they are susceptible to influence our influence because they're not sure what they want to do. You want them chasing you. So be very, very careful not to hyper sell your company or position. Number nine would be uh, using behavioral profiles. Um, the challenge with those is that they don't measure risk. That's number one. And number two, they are self assessments. They're, they're, they're great for team development stuff, but for hiring decisions, it's too easy to manipulate those tools. And I'm going to talk more about that later. All right. According to research, what are the most, what are most hiring decisions based on? It's enthusiasm. And uh, we think about it, 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 it affects us when somebody is leaning forward and they're really happy to, you know, take on this role and they get enthusiastic. And we think, wow, this is a, this is a go getter, right? Here are the four golden questions that you're trying to answer in your hiring process. Can they do the job? Obviously, right? Will they do the job? Now that is an entirely different question. And I'm going to show you how you can find that out. Um, how will they perform, right? If we can learn as much as we can about how, what we're going to actually see when they show up Monday morning after we've hired them, that's going to be a huge leg up for us, right? How will they perform? And then number four, and this is the most important by far, is what are the potential issues or problems that they're going to bring to my practice, to my, my small business, okay? And the reason that's the most important is because your number one goal when you're hiring is to protect the practice, okay? Really, really critical. Just protect the practice. Some of you know what I mean by that. What if you could know the information to those questions before you actually make a hiring decision? I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, this that I show you is gonna be like, uh, it's like a 90 day trial. It's actually better than a 90 day trial because people can perform really well, be on their best, game for 45 minutes during an interview. And in fact, they can be on their best game for 90 days. But once the honeymoon's over, what do you have? I'm going to show you a way to kind of get this information before you even make the hiring decision. You have a much better idea of what you really have. And you might not even need to do the trial. Here are the three secrets I promised. Okay, let's jump into it. Number one, um, you want to create what I call a superstar profile. Okay, well, what is that? What's really critical is that you start out with a very crystal clear idea of what it takes to succeed in the role that you're hiring for. And so what you want to do is sit down and you want to create a profile that covers some of these items here. The skills that you hope they've developed, um, objectives that they must deliver in that role, the challenges that you think they could face and that they're going to need to overcome, um, and just as important are the soft things like attitudes. You know, what kind of attitudes are critical for them to be successful in that role? And so, and there's a couple more, obviously, and you, you build this profile for the role. You even involve other people that have, um, that are part of that role or support that role. You know, who are they going to be working with? And you might even involve uh, some of your other employees and say, you know, what is critical about that role that you see as being necessary to be successful? Um, what are the challenges you've seen uh, for some of our other employees in that role, right? So involve other people if you want. And the critical thing is to do this for every role in your practice. Now, you know, a lot of people don't do this. And the, the clients that I have that have actually gone through this process, and I'm gonna make it actually very easy for you, they said it's made a huge difference in their hiring process. So you wanna do this for every role, and what I want to introduce you to here, I'm going to give this to you and I'll show you how to get it at the end of the webinar, are superstar profile templates that make it really easy. So this is just a little bit of paperwork. It's going to tell you exactly how to create the profile and it's going to give you templates. So all you really need to do is take these templates and for each role in your practice, fill them out and uh, again, involve a couple others in the, in the practice and, and get crystal clear on what you really would like to do. OK, now, one of the reasons that this is super important is this. You, you want to have a mindset that says, I will not lower my standards and hire subpar um, employees or candidates, because what we tend to do is lower our standards, especially if we're caught in a bind and we need to hire quickly. 
You really, really want to be careful. Once you're done with these templates and you have it, you can actually take them and use, you create a little, um, a checklist when you're actually in the interview process with people and you, you have the template. So from that, you build a little scorecard uh, and checklist. And when you interview people, you can keep track of how well they match up with the profile and the template that you made. It's pretty, pretty powerful, actually simple, but very, very powerful. Okay, secret number two is to create a superstar magnet. So once you know what exactly what you're looking for, now you're in a position where you can actually attract what you're looking for. And so let's talk about that a little bit. The number one question I get from people is, how do I find the best or high quality people? It's just difficult to find them. Well, all these steps help you, uh, but this part in particular is gonna help you attract the right people. And the, cri the, the critical strategy here is that you want to write a job ad that is based on the superstar profile that you've created, okay? Now, there's a slide that I don't have in here, but I'm gonna, if you'll, if you'll take some notes here, I'm gonna tell you what you should have in the, in the job ad, okay? I recommend you obviously have number one, job title. Number two, uh, a short blurb, a brief blurb, on the company and why it's going to be a great place to work and to have a career. Uh, number three would be core responsibilities and expectations. Number four would be skills required. Um, number five would be salary range, and that helps to kind of filter people out. Now, you're going to have to decide when it's appropriate to have a salary range in your job ad and when it's not. But in, in a lot of cases, it's, it's okay to do that. You give them a range and it helps weed people out. Um, and then finally, you want to have in the job ad, is very simple, just some hoops that they have to jump through. It could be asking them detailed uh, responses for, you know, have a cover letter, or here's the person you need to address your email to, or here I want three references, or, you know, whatever it is, you, you give them little hoops to jump through, okay? That's a really big deal, and that helps to sift uh, through people and, and sort through people. Now, but the critical thing in this secret is that other than those things I just gave you, you want to build that job ad in a way where you're talking directly to the person that you have sort of imagined up in your mind as the ideal in that role. So the key here, right, directly to the exact person you're looking for so that they know you're talking directly to them. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. This is people, people's experience. I get this feedback all the time. You're going to end up getting fewer applications. Okay. But what happens is the applications that you do get, you're going to have people that are a better fit, better match. They've raised their hand essentially and said, Hey, you're talking to me. That's me right there. You're describing. And so fewer applications, higher quality applicants is, is sort of the goal. And that's going to be a big time saver for you. It's going to save you time because it's going to attract the right people. I hope that makes sense. So that's secret number two. Hope I haven't messed up anything there or missed anything. Now, I also, if you want them, um, and I'm going to give you my information here at the end, I'm going to send you um, how to create a superstar magnet. It's going to guide you just briefly through how to do this. So that it's, it's all done for you. Um, you're going to give, uh, I'm going to give you sample ads that, that help you with, um, sort of crafting an ad that, that makes sense based on your profile. If people, if you don't get a good enough response, I've even got some tips and strategies in this material that help you to, you know, to guide you and what you do if you don't get a bunch of people applying and how to kind of change that. So these are really great resources and I'm going to share those with you. And so it kind of is done for you. All right, heading to a critical part, and that is the interview area. Now, um, I'm just looking down at some of my notes. So once you get the applications, you know, I think, you know, you guys, you've done this before. You know kind of what to do. You want to sort of create two piles. I mean, I, I recommend that people sort the resumes into two piles, one with cover letters and one without cover letters. I like the fact that people do cover letters because it tells me they're pretty sharp and they know what they're doing. And so you're qualifying people right off the bat. Um, review them just briefly to look for a general match 
the skills, background, and, and uh, the things that you've profiled. Look for quick things like grammar, spelling, and personality in the actual applicant uh, applications. And then you always want to Google people, do a little bit of research to find out what you've got there in case you can you learn some things you don't like. Um, so once you've, you're in a position where you've kind of boiled it down, now it's time to do the interview thing. We don't have a ton of time to talk about interviews. I could talk about it for days, but I recommend you do at least three interviews. I recommend you definitely do a 10 to 15 minute phone interview first. That saves you time. Maybe you're already doing that. Um, in fact, write this down. I'll, I'll send you, a, I didn't have this in here, but a cheat sheet on how to conduct a, a good phone interview. Uh, I'm happy to just include that in the email to you, but you'll have to ask for it because I won't know to send it to you, obviously. Um, the other thing is uh, you want to have multiple people in your office interview a, a candidate. OK, because you want different points of view. Hopefully you're already doing that. Just a couple quick tips. Um, and then let's get into this. So this is the challenging part for people because, you know, you've seen things on paper. You've maybe done a phone interview, but this is the chess game. You don't know what's below the surface. And so the cards are a little bit stacked against you. Um, and we've all we've all uh, we all know this. Right. There's no big secret. So how this is the question is. You, you you are really trying to find out the answer to those four golden questions we uh, we, we mentioned earlier. But how do you really, really know? Um, they're on their best game. They're totally prepared. Some people actually interview really well, and then they end up not being very good employees. So some people are super good on their feet. They're very quick. They're very adroit. They're, they're totally in the now, which means they just know how to respond to, to things. They know what you want to hear. Uh, some of these people are even manipulative. So they know how to get what they need and what they want. So, but how do you really know what you have? That's what we're all after because it helps protect us and protect our business. Well, the secret number three is critical. I call it the perfect interview. It's what Christy referred to at the beginning of the webinar. I call it the perfect interview because this is an interview, so to speak, that you can conduct in 15 minutes and it's going to tell you, it's going to give you the answers to your questions. It's going to help you know exactly how people are going to perform and what you really got. OK, uh, trust me on this. So it's a simple exercise that reveals how your job, job candidate is going to perform. It's going to actually reveal their hidden attitudes, attitudes about job and work and about people. It's going to tell you what their prioritized development areas are, or what I call risks, right? So you first thing is, what is it I haven't uncovered about this person that I don't know that they're not telling me that I really would like to know before I make a hiring decision? It's going to give those to you um, based on the role. And it's really, really cool stuff. And I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to give you an example. But before we get to it, here's the key. It is all about, in order to know this about an individual, okay, the reason that I was able to, uh, not me, but the, the science was able to uh, nail down um, Christy, her strengths, her challenges, her attitudes, her, um, uh, you know, confidence levels and things like that, level of persistence and detail-oriented, or if she's an individualist or a team player, is because the science in this 15 minute exercise that you have your candidate perf uh, to do, they will actually, you're going to be measuring, the science measures how the candidate actually thinks and makes decisions. So I'll give you an example of why this is so critical. Now, um, you're not supposed to be seeing all this at one time, but let me explain this to you. This is really, really cool. When we look, and people and, and we're looking at the results that they get and the performance in their life and at work. It's it, it comes down to four basic things that all human beings are doing all the time. Number one is the blue box to the left. They they first perceive things that are happening around them. OK. And based on the way that they see the world, they focus on certain things and they naturally, because of their bias, they don't focus on other things. So they value some things and they don't value other things. And that creates a filter. So they perceive information. Number two is that they think about it. They analyze what they're constantly, what the information coming in. Number three, and this is the most critical, is they make a decision. 
So we're doing this all the time, just constantly perceiving, analyzing, making a quick decision, and then we take action. So if you think about anything you've ever done in your life for minute to minute, day by day, you're not doing anything, taking action and performing unless you have made a decision. Is that kind of a safe assumption to make? So this is the way it works. Now, when we look at people and how they perform and we want to know how our job candidate is going to perform, we might be able to look at past performance. We might even have them on a 90 day interview and say, uh, you know, and watch them perform. But what we really want is we want to have a look under the hood. We want to know how does the person actually think and make decisions? And, and thirdly, how good is their judgment? How the quality of the judgment in the decision making, all performance and activity is based on that 100%. So basically, when you know how a candidate makes decisions and you know the quality of their decision making, you can actually know a lot about how they're going to perform in a given role, what their challenges are going to be, what problems you're going to run into, what their strengths are, and how to manage them. It's really great information. So that's what we want. We want a way to look at the things all the way to the, to the left of the red line. Well, how do you do that? Once you can see those things, you're not guessing anymore. That's the key point I guess I want to make. Um, number two, you significantly reduce your risk because you have a total heads up on what you can experience Monday morning when they show up. OK, and I'm also going to help you to, to know that. Um, so it's simple. They complete a 15 minute exercise. And let me show you this. This is really simple. Um, they're going to get a login and a password and you're going to say, hey, as part of our hiring process, we want you to go online and complete a simple 15 minute exercise. Not a test, a, a simple exercise. If you look on the left there, it's the, what's going to happen is they're going to put their name and the date uh, online, and they're going to basically, um, there's an exercise on the left, and there's a short exercise on the right. And look at the, uh, the, the, the directions here say, rank these items from best to worst. Best item gets the number one, and the worst item gets the number 18. So what the candidate's going to do is they're going to go online and, and complete an exercise where they rank from best to worst 18 items. And then they go to a second list of 18 and they rank those from best to worst. Now, if you've looked at these, you know, this is kind of interesting. A good meal is one of the items, a technical improvement, nonsense, a fine, a rubbish heap. OK, pretty interesting, huh? So what what do you notice there about the list? The first thing you should notice is that there are no questions on this. So this is not a personality profile. It's not a behavioral profile. It's not something that you're asking them to answer questions about themselves. That doesn't really help us when we're trying to get under the hood and see what we really have. We want the truth, right? So this is objective. There's no questions on it. Number two, it cannot be manipulated. They can't make themselves look better or worse because these are random items. They don't really understand what you're going to learn about them. So I got the truth about Christy and how awesome she is. And she had no way of manipulating this or kind of, you know, making herself look, you know, much better or much worse or whatever it is that she wanted to do. Um, the candidate cannot read into it. And that's critical. And of course, it measures how they think and how they make decisions. Um, I'm moving fast, I know, but this this is uh, what I call the performance profile, but I think it's the perfect way to interview. It's a perfect step, an interview step for people. It was nominated for a Nobel Prize, and it's literally used all over the world uh, in various applications. The government, um, the Department of Defense, CIA, FBI, you know, I don't want to, you know, get weird with you on that. Um, it's used Fortune 500 companies use it to hire. It is most people just don't even know it exists, but it's a very powerful tool, very simple. And what they've done is we have a way to just give a quick five page report based on the simple exercise that helps us when we're making a job, a, a, a decision, interview decision or a hiring decision as to what we really have. So there are hiring reports that are basically a risk analysis of your job candidate and telling you what to expect. And they're also development reports. So a lot of times we run these on employees because the manager wants to know a little bit more about the biases and the 
uh, performance issues, the, the real true strengths or hidden attitudes of certain employees or, or the whole team. We do a, a team call and kind of have fun. And so that's kind of uh, a little bit about the performance profile. Here's an example. So this is a manager interview guide. So this person has taken, uh, completed the exercise. They are a candidate to be a manager, to run an office. And this is page two. And you can see here, it gives you a very quick, brief idea of their attitudes, of problem solving abilities, of their self image. And that gets into things like persistence, uh, confidence and things like that. This person here has doubts and questions about where they currently are and what they're doing. It gives you the motivators. This person um, may tell you whatever they want to tell you, but we know now what really truly motivates them. First is a sense of mission and personal goals. Secondly is commitment to organization or team goals, right? And then it even gives you, if there are some stressors, it gives you the stressors. What are they currently experiencing that stresses them? This person is currently um, under some stress. There's three different areas there. By the way, going back, motivators, sometimes there's one thing here. Sometimes there's three or four, but this list is always um, prioritized. So you you will know what drives that person. You know, really, really critical information. Now, that's just a summary. The next page um, gives you the, the descriptions of the different levels of risk. That's in that, that box in the middle. And then if you look at the box on the bottom, it gives you six areas that we're measuring for a manager. Let's take a quick look at those. Managing others. This person is generally low risk. That's what this is showing. Managing activities. Generally low risk here, this particular candidate. Managing problems. Okay, how do they deal with problems and generate uh, effective solutions? How does this person uh, fare in the planning and organizing? How do, how do they think and make decisions there? And what, what are their biases? Um, getting things done. Are, are they results oriented or are they, you know, paralysis by analysis? You know, what is their general uh, way of getting things done? How do they, now the, the last one is managing self. What about self-control, emotional control? Now within each of these six, there could be 20 different areas that we, we might identify as either a real strength or a problem. So let's go to the next page. This is, the, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is a summary page and this shows you that this per, that, that what this does is it breaks it down on this page into strengths and risks. You can see that this person, if you look to the left, it says the risk level overall is low. And we know that because there are nine prioritized core strengths. And if you look down further, there are three prioritized development comments. Those are the risks. So if you want to know, I guess what, what, you know, you, you like the, the candidate a lot, but what you want to know is what they might be hiding or what are, what are the bad things they're not telling you? What are the risk of the development areas, right? What are you going to have to put up with? Okay. And depending on what those items are and the level of risk, and we're going to show you that too, then you can make a much more informed decision. You know what you got. This person has three risks and nine strengths. We call that a generally a low risk hire. But we still want to look at the risks and say, okay, what are they? And what's the level for each risk? But this is a low risk higher. If I go to another example, it's only eight core strengths and then four development areas. Now we're going up at the risk level. This is what we call a situational risk because there's eight strengths and four risks. And then we would look at the strengths and we would look at the risks. Now this person, it's the first risk is results oriented. It's kind of small there, but it says lack of attention to results will lead to delays and decisions that can interfere with getting things done. Now, I would on the phone with you, I would describe it and help you understand what that's really saying, what this person is like. Um, attention to concrete detail. OK, number three risk at the bottom. Common sense thinking. Number four, uh, sensitivity to others. Tendency to be indifferent to others. Pretty interesting information you can get here. So anyway, situational risk, you know, still might hire them. It depends on the role, depends on the challenges, depends on the risks, and depends on the risk levels. Here's an example of a much higher risk person, seven strengths, and now we're up to five risk areas. 
And each of these risk areas, if you'll notice, let's drill down on them. They actually, uh, this is cool. So, so these development areas that are listed here, these are the challenges and the problems that you would have never uncovered in an interview or on a resume, of course, right? Now for each risk, it's, uh, it's described for you, but also if you look in the red box there, there's a code. You see that little code there? And then it tells you the level of risk. Now each one of these are at the real risk level. That's the highest level, which means this is a consistent problem for this person. You will see this for sure. Well, these little codes, what's cool is you can actually go online and read about that risk. So you can go into more depth and see, what is this really, what do I need to know about this person? This is really interesting. So there's a risk level and a code. So if you go to the online reference manual, so every report comes with um, access to the online reference manual, you learn, you, you log in with a ref and then password is manual. You log in, and when you log in, you go to the appropriate tab, and you see on the left there, it gives you the code. So you look up the code. You guys know all about codes, running chiropractic offices. And then it describes the problem. See? Willingness to follow directions. This is this particular person's risk, one of their risks. Uh, it describes the problem, and then it tells you the general effects and what you're going to see. And watch this. It actually tells you, it gives you interview comments and suggestions. It tells you in a follow-up interview how to actually um, dig a little deeper and address some of these risk areas in um, with this person, okay? It's awesome because you're totally prepared and you're not blindsided and you know what to uh, uncover in a, in a follow-up interview. So... Basically, my clients across the country, the way they use this is pretty simple. They go through their hiring process. Hopefully, most of them are following the steps that I've outlined here. Um, they boil it down to one or two top candidates, right? They do their best job on the front end to boil it down. And then once they have had at least one in-person interview with their prospect, their candidate, and they, they've boiled it down to a couple that's when you run the performance profile and you do a risk assessment because now you want to know what it is you don't know because what it is you don't know is, is what you don't know that can hurt you. That's the way I like to say it. So they complete the 15 minute exercise and the, uh, you would get a five page risk analysis and, uh, and also a live consult with me. So I actually get on the phone with you. We take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you want. And we walk through the report and I describe to you what the report is saying and what you can experience. And you tell me what the role is. And we together sort of help. Uh, I make help make you um, help you make a great hiring decision. Sorry, I'm trying to hurry. So these these are the the if I broke it down to the three most important steps, these are the, st the steps, the categories, the strategies or secrets to actually having much more control over the hiring process who comes on your team, who you choose. Um, most importantly, uh, not most importantly, but also important is you'll know when you do hire them, you'll have a lot of information about that person and what you'll, you'll, you'll have a heads up. You'll know how to manage them. You'll know how to uh, properly motivate them and what does not motivate them. You'll know what problems to look for. So that's huge as well. And uh, of course, people are using all over the country for team development. And I can tell you more about that later. Um, just like some, some, uh, you know, um, testimonies I thought I'd throw in here. This is a, a this is one of my favorite clients, just a super, super team, Dr. Robert and, and Lisa Prather. He's a member of the Chiropractic Knights of the Round Table. He's got a great practice. Um, and uh, he says it helps us weed out people that interview well, but have risks that we don't want to take on. Uh, we use that for every potential candidate. In fact, he ran another report yesterday, and he says it's great, saves him a lot of time and money. Um, here's another, you know, Dr. Timothy Gallag uh, Gallagher out in uh, uh, Leominster. He's awesome. He talks about how creepy it is and how accurate the report is. You know, he he uses it for all his hiring. It helps him prepare for the interview. He, he's not blindsided. Um, Dr. Mark Santa, Christy brought him up, uh, has been such a, a super friend to me. Um, he recommends it to every one of his clients, and he's got one of the most successful chiropractic 
coaching practices, a super, super guy, very talented. You've probably heard from him on, on um, webinars, but he absolutely loves it and recommends it to all his clients. And so it's, it's powerful. Um, so in short, uh, bad hires cost you a fortune, time, energy, pain, and anguish. Um, but even if you're not hiring disaster employees, it would be nice to have um, much, you know, just to know who the higher quality candidate is and to have a leg up and, uh, and an insurance policy. So, you know, attract knowing who you're looking for, being able to attract the right person and then um, to be able to have a little risk mitigation is, is really just critical uh, for creating a best, the, the best people and the best team. Um, just real quickly. So I wasn't sure I was going to cover this, but I'll give it to you. You know, once people come in and they're in there, it's, it's so funny because I have actually helped uh, practices hire great employees, uh, great high quality candidates, and then things don't work out. And why is that? Well, number one, you know, you can't see everything, but mainly it's the direct manager who uh, most directly affects the performance of the person um, outside of their own talents and abilities. So, you know, you can put good people into bad systems or uh, under bad management and, of course, run into problems. So as a quick uh, tip for you, this came from the Gallup organization. Um, it, it, enormous amount of research. What it shows is this, that the measuring stick. So you as a, let's say you're a manager and owner of the business, a measuring stick for you to apply to yourself as a manager in order to provide the best possible opportunity for that good quality employee to perform and have what they need. These are the 12 items right here. Okay. These are the 12 items, but let me make it even simple. And if you want these, you can ask me for these two and I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you these on email. Um, here are the top seven. Does the employee know what is expected? Are they crystal clear on that? Do they have the materials and resources they need? Um, do they have the opportunity to do what they do best? Uh, the performance profile will certainly help you know that. Number five, does my manager care about me? Critical. Number seven, do my opinions seem to count? Do I have input? Do I have feedback? Am I a, a stakeholder? These are the items. Numbers, th these set, these one, two, three, four, five, these five items are the most influenced by the direct manager. So for you, once they come in and you've got high quality people, these are critical items. I hope you've written those down. They have the strongest correlation to employee retention, right? So that's big. All right. Free resources. Here's how you get them. Um, and I'll take a, a few minutes for questions here. So the tools and the templates and sample ads and kind of how to do this. And it's, it's simple. It's not a lot of homework, but um, I've got all that for you. If you want it, email me at Jeff at DC hiring pro.com. Um, you can put in the subject line tools that kind of helps me know what you're looking for. Um, or you can just, you know, say it in the, in the body of the email. Um, the ultimate small business guide to hiring superstars. I really recommend you jump on this. Um, I'm paying for it. You know, I think here it's $3 shipping. I think I had 350. I think it's 350, uh, is what I learned. So that's a, that's a, um, I need to edit that in the slide. But again, just email me, Jeff at dchiringpro.com. It's, um, it's a great, great read. Um, it'll really, really, uh, I guess, expound a little bit more on the, the items that I covered. It, it, it'll just spell it out for you. It's awesome. And I'll send that out to you. The other thing, too, is that I really recommend if you really want a lot of great free tips and strategies and stuff, I have a, a newsletter, an email I send out uh, a few times a week. And it'll just, it's short, but it'll just give you some really great little info, little tips, little strategies. People love it. And you can sign up uh, by either going to my website, which is dchiringpro.com, or you can just shoot me an email and say, hey, put me, put me on your newsletter. And I'll send those out to you. Um, but you're going to learn about, you know, tips on hiring, motivating, managing, performance, you know, how to give proper feedback. Um, anything else I, I could think of that could really, really help you as a manager or as an owner of a small business. Um, hopefully those are um, useful to you. And uh, there's another thing I'm going to do, which is a risk-free trial. Um, basically, if you want to experience the accuracy and the insight and power of the performance profile, you know, how do you test it and know? 
you can do a risk-free trial. It's only $97. You basically have an employee that you know really well, complete the exercise. And then I'm going to give you a five page risk analysis on them. And I'm going to jump on the phone with you and I'm going to just walk through that report. So you'll learn about the report. You'll know kind of all about your employee, which is really super valuable information anyway. And um, there's a guarantee that if I've wasted your time, you get your money back. But that way, that way you can test it. You can experience it. It's a test drive. Uh, you really need to do that if you plan to use it in the future for any of your hiring. I recommend you do it on a current employee first so you can experience it. And the second thing you see here is that I came up with some discounts for the uh, for all of you out there. Um, you can, uh, if you do it in January, just because you were on the webinar, if you want to purchase ahead of time uh, three hiring reports and consults, they always come with a consult. You know, you purchase three or more, I'll give, give you 20% off. If you purchase a five pack, which is usually what I do at 20% off, so five pack. If you do a five pack in January because of the webinar, I'm doing 30% off. Um, there are reports for general hires. There are reports for managers that we run, for associates that we run. Uh, you got like kind of customer service and then you got associates and, and managers. Um, there's no expiration on them. That's important to know. And I guess they're, they're money back guaranteed. So if you think you're going to be hiring, if you need some help now, I can help you. Um, and I can save you some money and I'll answer any questions that I haven't answered thus far. So I, I ran through that quickly, but Christy, if you're there, uh, if anybody's got a few questions, I'm happy to do my best to field any, any questions, but I hope that this has been useful and, and I'd love to help you anytime with your hiring or employee stuff. So the first question is, how would you word that our office is a drama free office without calling it drama free? We have recently had a lot of drama in our office that affects how we, we perform. We're currently looking at new hires and want to make sure that this is an essential part of the interview to make it clear. Great question. Um, and obviously you do your part up front to learn what you can in the interviews, but uh, I, I, is the question, Christy, how do you make it clear that the drama has been a problem in the past? How do you make that clear with the new job applicant? No, they're wanting to make it clear that it's a drama free office is the way. Got I it. Got it. Got it. Well, again, that th this is an example of some of what you can pick up in the in the performance profile. Um, it's going to it's going to. It doesn't pick up everything. OK, right. So if the manager, uh, you know, I can't overcome bad management. It could be that it could be other stuff. But if you want to know if a person has um, uh, bad attitudes, work attitudes, if they're overly competitive, if they're an individualist and want to just kind of do things their own way, if they're bossy and they're highly perfectionistic and they just think they and they have to control everything. Uh, we get all of that. If you want to know if what their level of emotional control um, is, we get all that. Uh, the number one th reason that this science is so powerful at predicting performance and behavior um, is because it is measuring the quality of those people's judgment and their decision making. So um, I wish I had more time to explain how powerful it is and what it can do. But you're just going to be a lot more clear about what you can expect from this person. The other thing, too, is that it's important, usually with most practices, I want the manager who's doing the hiring or the direct manager who's going to manage that person. I really want their profile because um, they're the one who most affects directly that employee. And so I like to have either the owner or the manager's profile so that I understand what is a good mix, what's a good match. If an owner's hiring a front office person or a manager, I kind of want to know what the dynamic is between the two, right? And that helps me. Um, so that, but yeah, a lot of that we can pick up. You know, the the the, the drama, um, the immaturity. You know, I think that it's really interesting that you just brought that up about having the profile of the person that's going to be directly working with them so that you can see how they would potentially either get along or not get along because we did two profiles. We did mine and the person that I had already hired. And one of the things was it was like 
these two people are not going to get along. We did not get along. We were great in the interview process, but in the long term, she and I, and I get along with everybody. So it's really, and I like her a lot yeah. as a person, but we could not work together because of how different our personalities were and just the way we operated. So that is excellent advice. Well, I don't, and I didn't know that, uh, Christy. I didn't know that that ended up happening. Uh, but, but I'm glad that the report at least gave you a heads up on that. But, you know, the other reason, though, is not just personality, but it, let's say, Christy, you, you need to hire somebody on your team to do certain things. You know, what is it that, Christy, that you are not going to naturally pay attention to? Where are your weaknesses? And so what do you need in a personal assistant? Does that make sense? You know, yeah. So they comp, you know, what do you need on your team to complement you so that whatever it is you're not paying attention to and that you naturally don't focus on or that you're weak in, you know, you need somebody that's maybe more detail oriented or less detail oriented and is more of a big picture person, you know, things like that. I completely agree, which is why she didn't say my assistant for very long. We moved her in a different position, but the next person we were like yin and yang. Yeah, and again, this is not personality. We don't measure um, intelligence. We don't measure personality or behavior. We literally are looking at how the people think and how they make decisions. And because of we because we can see that and measure it, that tells us so much more about their attitudes and their biases. And I wish I had a list on here of all the things you could learn, but it's all in the report. It's pretty cool. You just have to experience it. You really do have to just experience it because it's like the craziest thing ever. Like I said, I was very, I totally disagreed with my report because I was like, I am not like this at all because I was a little sensitive to it. And that might be my report. And, <laughs> you, and you wouldn't have revealed that in an interview, would you? Heck no. But that is that. Yeah. When we read the report, and like I said, everybody who works in our executive team that I work with one on one has all read the report and it has improved our ability to communicate and work together because we can very clearly see where we are different and where we are alike. Well, one of the things I do is a team development kind of a thing where, you know, somebody has five of their staff, you know, the main team uh, take take the complete the exercise. And then we give them a report. Now, it's not a hiring report. It's not a risk analysis, but it is a, a two page, very brief, down and dirty, helps me know how they think and make decisions. And then we do a phone call with the team. And it's actually a blast because I break it down into communication preferences and style preferences so that each person on the team can see on a little chart where the other people are. And so now they know how to more effectively communicate with and work with those other people because they know where those other people are coming from. And it's not a personality thing. It's literally how they see the world and how they think. And it, it changes for those who implement it after the call. It really, really improves things. But for a manager to know uh, on their current staff, I mean, I know I kind of talk a lot about hiring and that's important, but for a manager to know, their current staff really well. It, it, it's huge. It really makes a huge difference. So, I agree. Do, yeah. So, uh, where do you, where is the best place to list a job opening? That is a great question. So I knew I'd get that question because I get it every time. And uh, you know, I say you do it in uh, a number of places. You know, you know, there's Indeed, there's Monster. Um, I don't really focus a lot on where it is. I, I mostly focus, you know, on where, uh, what, you, what you're doing. I mean, sometimes we write job ads that actually turn people away. So I kind of focus on that. And then I basically let people know, look, throw a wide net, you know, list the job ads in a number of places. Um, you know, literally Craigslist, Facebook, Monster, Indeed, you know, your own website, by the way is a critical place for you to have um, a, a description of why it would be great to work there, okay? Because there's people sometimes that'll just go do searches on, on your website and they might know they wanna be in that field or work in a chiropractic office. Um, and, and also 
always be in the mindset of hiring. You don't have to do interviews. You don't have to place ads, but always be aware and, and, and cognizant of the talent around you. Now you put them through your process, right? You don't just make assumptions, right? Or, or allow a, a recommendation to work, uh, to, to be the thing you make your decision on. But, um, always be in the hiring mentality and looking at talent and, and because, you know, it's all happened to us, right? You get stuck. Somebody takes off. They give you a two week notice if you're lucky. And then you're now you're in a panic and now you're behind the curve. Um, even if you want to collect applications for people that, you know, where well, you're not hiring now, but people are checking in and you're having conversation, um, collect that information. Always be ready. You know, that's really a critical thing too. I agree. Some of our best things are people that were interested in us and reached out to us. We kept their um, resume on file, had them fill out an application, and then they would check in with us. And then one of them, we loved him so much of him just checking back in with us. We created a position for him and it was the best decision. Yeah. Yeah. Always be in the, in the, in the hiring mindset. Any other questions? We have uh, one more. It said, where would I find the performance profile? Well, so the way it works is that um, I give you a login and a password and you would share that with an, a, a candidate and then they would complete the exercise online. And then I send you the report that's generated and set up a time to call. Now, if you want to look at it, Meaning you just want to check out these, this list of items, the 18 that you rank and then the second 18 that you rank. Uh, email me and I will, this goes for anybody. Email me and I will send you a PDF version of the two pieces of paper. And it's literally that simple. It just gives you the directions, rank these items from best to worst. And then the second page, rank these items from best to worst. I'll send that to you. You can look at it. And it's kind of fun because you'll see um, that there's no way to manipulate it. It's not a self-assessment. You're not asked. You're measuring performance directly, performance and decision making directly. You're actually asking them to go do something for you. And you're you're seeing if they follow the directions and then you're measuring how they did it and the thinking and the deciding that's going on. You did it directly. You don't even have to ask them to audition for you. Well, that's kind of what you did, but they don't know it. So hopefully that makes sense. But I'm happy to send that out in a PDF version. You can see it. You're going to look at this list and go, I don't understand how this all works. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Well, so we found out about this 20 years ago. My brother was in uh, an interview um, for a very big position, a big company, a national sales director. They said, okay, go home, complete a 15 minute exercise. My brother said, well, I've done little assessments before this is like the rest of them goes home and completes it he was scratching his head he couldn't believe it and he went to a second interview and the way that guy interviewed him and and knew him it blew his mind that's how all this got started and and so we've had it in the family and in our business for 20 years we've been using this this is awesome it is cool so cool last one was how much is it per profile i was waiting for that question about them yeah, so I uh, so it, it depends on the role because I pay different uh, prices for the report, um, and uh, so I'll just give you an example. If it's a general employee, a, a front office person, billing, you know, whatever, um, then the you get a five page risk analysis, and then twenty thirty minutes with me on the phone is a, a couple hundred bucks, basically. And that's why you boil it down to one or two candidates. This is not something you just take top 10 or 15 candidates and have them go complete this. That's not the way to do this. This is a last sort of a um, look under the hood before you make a decision or before a second or third final interview. So you can limit your risk and you know exactly what you got and you know how to interview that person and dig a little deeper. Or you say, I'm, I'm done here. There's too much risk based on the report that I got. This is not what we, what we want. And it happens all the time, all the time. Okay. So if it's a manager, if it's a manager or an associate, it's a much more important decision. And so it's a little bit more. 
Um, so again, I really encourage y'all to try the risk-free trial because again, it's with an employee you've had for a really long time that will blow you away. Like I said, when Dr. Foxworth looked at my report, his exact words were like, it's like somebody printed a manual of you. Like it was very, even if I disagreed with it at first, uh, <laughs> because it was so accurate. Um, and it is the most accurate assessment of me, my decision making, my behaviors, really about so much stuff that I probably wasn't even really aware of. Yeah. Um, black and white. Yeah. The candidate doesn't even know half the stuff that's in the report. Like they don't, we don't see ourselves. We don't really know how we perform. It's that's, that's the way biases work. <laughs> we don't see the truth anyway. Anyway, like I said, try the free trial, give it a whirl so you can really get to experience what this is like. Um, like I said, I've done it before. So I, It'll blow your mind. And because the reality is, is that we don't have a lot of time in, in the practice to continually be training new people. There's so much time lost, so much money that is lost when we're continually having to hire people. So we want to make sure that the people that we're hiring are going to be there for a long time. They're going to do the job, that they're not hiding stuff from us. It is going to be a yeah. major mess to clean up. We want to hire the right people, and they're also going to be the the face that greets all of our patients coming into our office. And this is just not one of those things that you really want to risk. You want to invest as much on the front end, make sure you're getting the right person on the back end, so it's a one and done. So yeah. try it out, and let me know what you thought, because like I said, he said it's money back. If you feel like it didn't accurately describe the employee that you had, do it, let him know. But I'm telling you, it is going to blow your mind. It's been years since we've done this. Like I still have mine in my desk drawer and it still blows my mind. Again, I didn't want to admit half the stuff that it said about me. I also tell Jeff, they, I wouldn't have hired me. I told Dr. Foxworth I wouldn't have hired me too. But they both pointed out all the reasons why they would hire me as a candidate based on what was in that profile. And they weren't wrong. So I've been here for 10 years now. <laughs> well, that's why you need the consult because you, you need me to explain here are the risks, but here's what it's really saying. And what, you know, given the role and, and, and the manager and leader, you know, it, it, it's not a cut and dry. If it was a cut and dry, I would send you the report and that's all you would need, but it needs to be a, a little conversation. The debrief or the conversation, the consult is critical. The consult is critical. Um, I was a lot less offended by it after I understood. <laughs> Your profile was great, Christy. You got a lot of talent. A lot of talent. <laughs> so funny. Like, I really was. I was so angry when I read that thing. I was, like, so offended. And then when you talked oh. about things I viewed as negative were a positive. Before, I mean, and he didn't know. Again, it wasn't. He didn't know it was me. He thought it was for the assistant that I already hired that was not the right fit for me. But well, it's it's mainly a risk analysis. So it it does, you know, it's trying to give em, em, well, hiring managers the heads up on some things. If that's the point, that's the point. But it also gives them strengths in the talent system. It does. So, it has strengths and the weaknesses and um one of the things that it said about me in my profile was that I have a tendency to go rogue basically. Like I just yeah. And run off and do stuff. I just don't tell people about it. Ironically enough, I think that's one of the things that Dr. Foxworth loves the most about me because he also does go. The rest of our executive team wants to kill us every time we do this and it drives them crazy. So now they're always on the lookout for the signs that we have gone rogue once again. But it's just we get excited about something we forget to tell everybody else to just run with it. Um, yeah. Is it a strength? Is it a weakness? You know, it's just one of those things. It depends on how you run your office. It depends on who that person is working for. Since it yep. just happens to be my direct supervisor's strength as well, we see it as a strength. Everybody else, maybe not so much. So check it out. You will not be disappointed. Um, if you ever uh, have any additional questions after the webinar, uh, Jeff has provided his email address at jeff at dchiringpro.com. His phone number is 919-847-1950. And because I love him so much and he knows so much about team building and hiring and just 
all these amazing things that we really need so much help with because phantom people show up for these interviews. We want to, uh, we're going to have Jeff on again later this year. We're going to talk about team building, uh, which I thought was great since we had some questions that were like, we're hiring new people because obviously team building has become kind of an issue and that does become tougher and tougher the bigger your practice gets. So we're over our time because I love Jeff in this topic so much. Uh, all right. I'm going to cut it off at this point. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to Jeff. You can reach out to me and I'll make sure I'll get y'all connected. You have an amazing rest of your day and a fabulous week. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Christy.